they live today. Okay. Hello and welcome to Indie Apocalypse Radio. I am your host Andrew, and after two weeks, we've run into a lot of me forgetting to do a lot of things. Your you can see me live typing in all of my mistakes that I've done. Um, so Indie Apocalypse Radio, it's you know what it is. It's it's me. I come on and I talk to people around the world of game development, usually related to Indie Apocalypse as it typically is. And I have usually have nice pictures up here. I have nice things done. But listen, now we are just having fun chatting. And I and I did not also realize that my, my intro song was on loop. And I was waiting for my my telltale sign of a, you know, the old, the old drinking boys and girls choir to kick in. And it never kicked in. I was like, wait a minute, why not? Where is the song? But anyway, I'm here. I'm here with the guests who you may know from guest editing the first issue of Indie Apocalypse Presents Indie Sushin. And I'm always going to hit that wrong because I am much like rolling my R's in Spanish. I do not know how to hit the old TS properly in Japanese. Um, it's Nice Gear Games. Oh, Yay. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Hello, how are you doing? Hello. Oh, we're doing great. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm going so, to. Uh, my name is Nenkon, um, and I'm the English-speaking half of Nice Gear Games. Hi. And my name is Daikon. Yeah, I'm speaking Japanese. <laughs> <laughs> most of the time, not in this, not in this, yeah, um, this particular yeah. <laughs> month. Um, I'm going to, and I am Andrew. I speak, I speak English, and. <laughs> can functionally read a little bit of Japanese. <laughs> I'm I'm up to like level 52 or whatever in my my kanji learning app Ooh. which is very high or no it's sorry is it 52 whatever I'm um, whatever the the last one is whether it's 50 or 60 I am either 42 or 52. I'm 8 right. from completion which means that I will have a lot of kanji in my brain but no context in terms of sentences. That's, that's a good first step. Like yes. learning to recognize all the different characters. Yeah. Mm. Cause I was like, I was looking, I was looking at textbooks and seeing like how people go to self teach. And I was like, I do not even know what hiragana or a katakana is. And I was like, I suppose I should learn those. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like if, if I have any advice, it's to like first learn hiragana and katakana and um, there's this book series that I really like called Remembering the Kanji. Maybe okay. that's what your app is also doing. Maybe. Um, are you using Wanikani? I'm using I'm... Wanikani, yes. Yeah, so Wanikani uses like the same system as Remember the Kanji where you're learning like the different parts of the characters, right? Mm. Yeah, like, and then, like they call them radicals. Yeah, and then making like a, a mnemonic about each character, right? Using yeah. like making a story. Yeah. Mm. yeah a lot and of times so it's the same mnemonic, so I, I often have to make my own mnemonics. Mm. Mm -hmm. And like it's it's really good I found to like learn the different radicals. Um, that way you can learn, or that that way you can recognize the kanji when you see it, mm -hmm. um, like at a glance. Yeah. And also, if you don't know that kanji, you can like look it up because you know what the radicals are. Yeah. Which, I did not have when I was first studying Japanese. So I'm just like, here's a brick wall of text. Like, good luck climbing over it. <laughs> and I have, I've, I'm just hammering away at it. But fortunately, I mean, it's, it's like English. You're not going to be expected to learn, every, in the, much in the way you can't learn every word in English. Yeah. You don't have to learn every single kanji. Yeah. Yeah. Because like it's it's a lifelong experience. You're always learning new words, but as long as I get mm. enough of them, they get by, mm. and then I can find a good textbook to learn grammar. But that's like you know, I, <laughs> I do a lot of stuff all at once, including indie apocalypse. Which brings me to my first question, which is the one question I forgot to send to you, which is um, how did you? And maybe I think that's because Rancon. I assumed you you would have the answer for this, which is how did you hear about indie apocalypse? Yeah, so actually I read about Indie Apocalypse in um I think the Rock Paper Shotgun article. Okay. Um, that came out 
uh, how many months ago now? <laughs> I, you know what? I could tell you, like, oh, it was a few months ago, and it was going to be like six months ago. Oh, well, you know what? When did I know when I can do this? Because it's it featured that um, the, the Yuki's 4P as like the cover header image. Mm-hmm, that's right, yeah. So whichever issue that was in was the most recent issue, which I th- uh, let me. Let me do my. Can I? Can I remember? Play. Was it twenty four? No, it was not twenty four. Was it twenty? Where? Issue where? Issue twenty two looks like. Yes. So issue twenty two. Yeah, that's when yeah. Milky Lemon was in here with that whole thing, and that was when was that? When we're getting into this, these very <laughs> these minute November. So, November. Mm-hmm. so probably sometime in like December, beginning of this year, mm-hmm. beginning of this year ish. Yeah. Or, yeah. Okay, so not that long ago. I'm like, am I in 2023? What's going on? No, not that long ago. Uh, yeah. yeah. So I, I saw the the rock paper shotgun article of Indie Apocalypse, um, and then I bought it, and I yeah. was like, this is really cool. Mm-hmm. Like. Um, I've always kind of wanted to make like an English, like either website or like some kind of, uh, something about like indie games in Japan. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so I saw this and I was like, wow, like, I wish I had like the time and the energy and the, (laughs) Mm -hmm. or rather, sorry, I have the time and the energy. I just don't have like the, the, the discipline. (laughs) Right. And you (laughs) made this. And then you yeah. also you made the mistake of say, mentioned saying that exact thing online where I could see it, and then I was like, "Hey, wait a minute!" As I'm sometimes want to do when people go, "Ah, oh, I wish I could do this," and I'm like, "You know, I can do this. I can help you do this." Indeed, and so yeah, and then that's when uh, Andrew uh, contacted me and I was like, "Hey." Instead of dreaming about this, you should do it. And I'm yeah. like, oh, okay. Because <laughs> <laughs> you already do a little of similar. I need to look up my own questions that I sent you because I forgot what they were. Um, you already do a little bit. So tell me, tell me a little about Happy Hour because this is kind of like related, I think, to this. Yeah. So mm-hmm. um, originally we would, or so Daikon would be in like game jams, yep. um, mm-hmm. specifically the Unity One Week game jam, which is, um, it, it's just it's the popular game jam in Japan. Yeah, yeah, I guess it's like the most popular game jam in Japan on UnityRoom.com, um, and so he would appear in that, um, or sorry, he would submit a game in that, and then I would be like, hey, let's play every single game, like every game that got submitted to this jam, um, which was. Which was, it would become like a like a marathon project. Yeah. And so we would do that over the course of like a week. Um, and then at the end of it, we'd be like, okay, let's uh, stream some of the ones that we really liked. And so we would, you know, go on YouTube, which is, uh, and then just stream out some games. And uh, yeah, and so we would do that. And I would explain a lot of it in English um, with the hopes that like maybe English speakers would want to check out these like Japanese indie games. Yeah. Um, and mm-hmm. Yeah, and then so from there we're like, what if we we did this like every week <laughs> instead of yeah. just whenever there's a jam? There's a dangerous mm-hmm. men- mentality, and I've that I find myself caught in a lot of the time. Yeah. <laughs> and so we're like, let's just do this like every Friday. And so we we made this like little show. It's called Happy Hour, um, yeah. which is just an hour of us uh, streaming some indie games that we found over the week. Um, yeah, and like introducing them in both English and Japanese. Yeah, we also want to introduce an English game to Japanese game developer. Yeah. So, mm. 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 so like, I would in I would try to introduce Japanese games in English, and then Daiko would explain uh, Japanese uh, English games in Japanese. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because it's a. Uh... You know, both countries only get probably the biggest versions of everything. Every you know, every major release we get like the biggest. Yeah. We get the biggest things from Japan. Japan gets the biggest things from the U.S. And there's a lot of little stuff around. You know, that doesn't make it all the way over. Yeah. So actually, that was also another reason why we wanted to do happy hour because we wanted to like specifically set aside time in our week where it's like, okay, we want to play Pokemon all the time, but <laughs> right, right, <laughs> we should also. Like, 
We should also be playing like, you know, some games that don't get the big, huge AAA like press tours. Listen, I could, so like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I can't spend every living day of my life playing Final Fantasy 14. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so, so I, <laughs> I've, I, I also I have them. to. This gives me a good excuse to play a lot of indie games. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And yeah. so, like, especially if it's like we have like a streaming show, so we can't just like back out of it and yeah. be like, oh, I don't want to play indie games today. I want to play Pokemon. It's like, no, we can't. We have a yeah. show to put on. Yeah. <laughs> we have to. <laughs> So yeah. even if nobody watches our show, it's just like it's mostly for us, actually. Yeah. Like, yeah. honest. <laughs> yeah. That yeah, I think just, that that's one of the big benefits of having two people. It's, it's a lot easier to do things just for yourself because you're just one other person to enjoy it with you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Indeed. Which, like, because I've thought of like, oh, I should do, like, I like the idea of I've been getting into more serious let's plays, like. um not just like streamed games, but the 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 subgenre of let's play, which is like, oh, I know this game in and out. Sometimes they're like very edited, actually, and recorded mm. after the fact, and they're not like, you know, I it'd be I watched a lot of them where someone played through all the Metal Gears and like, here's all the stuff that's in Metal Gear. I like this game a lot, and here's all the secrets. Here's a bunch of like the mm. perfect, you know, editing the perfect run of a game and everything. And it was very interesting. And I'm kind of, but I was like, I can't do that by myself. <laughs> mm. Oh, I will be back in one second. I, I got, um, I, I ordered some food and I'm going to go get it real quick. <laughs> I'll be back for but a moment. It's a, okay. it's a quick walk to my door and back. Okay. <laughs> Metal Gear Let's Play. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Dekawa, did you ever watch any Let's Plays? Uh-huh. Aw. Mm-hmm. So Let's Play is like a... What is... Yeah. Let's, so Let's Play is like somebody playing a video game and like mm. talking about it. So it's kind of like... It, I mean, it can be like someone just streaming their game, but usually it's someone who really knows the game. Oh. And like explaining... Like all of the mechanics or uh-huh. all of like the secret stuff in in the game. Uh-huh. So like the idea is supposed... different from speedrunner. <laughs> yeah, it's different from speedrun. It's it's supposed to be kind of like like I think not... it's same actually. Not, not same. So speedrunner is like they don't want to show you a lot of stuff because yeah, yeah, that yeah. would take up time. Mm. So for a let's play, usually they... hidden hidden item. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. So usually let's play is like they want to. Like basically document the whole game. Oh, it's cool. Yeah, oh. yeah. So it's like Hello, it's, I'm back. <laughs> like it's not really a documentary, but it's kind of like Oop. if a player oh. were to make a documentary about the game. Oh, Metal Gear is good. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's like the um, I'm back. Hello. Um, it's yeah. It's like the, it's like the best, like the best version. Like kind of like it, I made a TV show, and this is the best version of the game being played. <laughs> without without mistakes like here is the optimal run sort of thing but not but also like i'm gonna tell you a lot about it i'm gonna it's interesting mm-hmm. i liked it um mm-hmm. but i'm sorry that both that was both the case of me of me accidentally starting a show later than i was expecting and the food getting here faster than i was expecting but um so speaking of happy hours speaking of your bonus issue. Mm-hmm. What made you choose the games you chose for the bonus issue? Because, like, I usually, um, I, you know, I go through the submission process of having 10 people. You know, I've, or I technically I pick eight of the games from submissions. One's commissioned. One is, like, one I find on my own. How do you mm-hmm. find – How? what made you choose the 10 games you found on your own? Um. So the – all of the 10 games that we chose for this issue, they all came from games that we had uh, already played at least once on mm-hmm. our uh, our streams of the Unity One Week Game Jams. And so we chose 10 games that we thought were like really cool and fun. Not necessarily mm-hmm. the most polished ones, um, but rather the ones that made us feel mm-hmm. like this was something special or cool. Yeah. Um, and then we messaged uh, each of the 10 devs. Yeah. And we're like, is it okay to feature this game in this issue? 
Um, and a couple of them wanted to change their titles because uh, of like music and licensing and like stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, and so a couple of the games were uh, not actually our choices, but um, but th that's fine because they were all really uh, interesting. We found. Yeah, a lot of times I will like if when I when I um, ask someone to submit a game, I'll say like I'll usually find one of their games and in the initial message I'll say you can submit this or anything else you'd like to submit because usually like. If one game is good enough, the developer is probably making like any any other games are good enough. Very rarely is it like, oh, this part, this game, one game is great and the rest were terrible. Yeah. <laughs> and they yeah. just they so, they just got lucky once. And so like uh, the Unity One Week Game Jams, they're actually like ranked, so like the community can um, give. The, each game a score of like fun and innovation yeah. and I forgot the other category graphics sound graphics sound and innovation, uh, innovation yeah and, and uh, control ah uh, yeah control yeah, yeah. Right. it's like there are like just five categories yeah so there are mm. five categories where you can rank uh, each game and then at the end of like a one or two week like yeah. review period they announce like these are the top fifty games as mm. voted by the community. Um, and usually the top 50 games that the community votes for are totally different from like the top 50 games that we liked in that <laughs> jam. <laughs> um, and the thing is that like after the jam ends, not a lot of people will play the games that didn't appear in the top like 10 or top 50. Yeah. And they all just kind of get forgotten, which we think is like, you know, it, it sucks that like um, only like the, the quote unquote winners of this jam will mm. like really continue to see any uh play yeah and so we wanted to mm. feature some games that uh some of them appear in the top 50 and some of them don't um but we really liked all of them and all of the ones that we chose tend to be in our top 10 of whatever mm -hmm. jam that was in <laughs> well, that's very cool because i mean that is perfectly in line with my intentions of what i try to do it's like hey i want to highlight of the little weird stuff that other people don't necessarily know about because it's it's still good even if it's not popular you know yeah and, and so like, actually one of my my favorite games from the most recent jam would like be considered really bad by most people's standards <laughs> i think okay. uh, it's like I don't want to like when I when I talk about this game, it sounds like I'm making fun of it. Yes, <laughs> but it's awesome because yeah. it's like it, you get spawned in this like in this big room, and very obviously the developer just got like a bunch of Unity assets and just threw them all in. Mm. Like there's a timer in the corner for some reason, even though there's like no <laughs> time limit. There, you know, like as you're walking around, like tigers will start spawning and like like collide with you, just you know, just because it's funny. Yeah. And then you push the jump button and you jump like higher than the mountains. It's <laughs> it's just hilarious. And yeah. like in the background of this like this room that's full of just like random assets, there's like this big message in text that's like it's basically like. Thank you so much, everyone, for the great school year. Hope to see you soon. Let's keep in touch. Or something like that. Yeah. yeah. And like, that, that game is not for everybody. Yeah. That game is for this developer's friend. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's really... Uh, yeah. yeah. And so, like, when I think about this game and when I talk about this game, it sounds like I'm making fun of it because it yeah. is, like, you know, by most people's standards, like, a bad, quote-unquote, like, asset flip kind of game. Yeah. But, like, it's just so, like, it's... It's like looking into someone's dreams, like as they're mm. sleeping and seeing like all the the cool and random things that they're thinking of. Like, why did this developer put like a giant like ice cream sundae float here? Like, I don't know. It's because it's funny. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> people are too. Listen, people have been too focused lately about games being good. And I, I'm sick of it. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> games... like you can jump than the mountains that's funny like yeah. it's, it's fun <laughs> it's yeah there's 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 room for like absurd art and mm. like kind of yeah like ridiculous art mm. and also there's you know i i found in these more recent years as uh things have become more very like a, a push towards like you know the big polished titles. I'm like mm. I like 
I like bad art. I think I really like bad art a lot. Yeah. <laughs> because it's very sincere. Yeah, it is. Like, mm -hmm. that weird game that we played where you jump higher than the mountains. Like, that's the most sincere piece of art I've mm, seen in, yeah. like, a long time. <laughs> right. And then you have a lot of situations where people are like, well, I'm going to make the best version of, you know, whatever game is trendy at the moment, you know. I really want to make a a roguelike puzzle platformer, you know, because those are what like, popular right now or something. Yeah. And you feel like, like, oh, this is a good version of that. I see you really liked playing Dead Cells, I guess. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, I, I, I appreciate that it must be hard to make, like, a good Sokoban game. Yeah. But also, after playing so many Game Jam submissions, it's like, I don't want to see another polished, beautiful Sokoban, like, ever again. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> Unless it feels like this Sokoban comes from you. Like, where were you, yeah. <laughs> where were you in this Sokoban version? Because you can, like, it's just one of those situations where, if, like, if Sokoban didn't exist, would you would you ever make this a game like this? Yeah. Um, granted, like, you know, Sokoban is a very uh, foundational kind of game, I feel like. Mm -hmm. And there are definitely some games that are, like, more, like, you know less foundational and less kind of like at their core very simple games that kind of permeate into everything how old is sokoban actually sokoban, how old is sokoban do you know i feel like it's super <laughs> oh i remember playing sokoban games on like my super old like apple II. I yeah guess. it originally <laughs> came out like... it came out in 1982 1982, yeah. <laughs> so, Soko Bond is older than I am. Yeah, same here. <laughs> so, yeah, and then, yeah, and so, I mean, those kind of, like, simple, there are, um, I mean, there are different variations you can take on it. There is, like, mm. um, I think, you know, there's, like, Soko Bond. Mm. Which yeah, tells Soko Bond, like, even Baba is you. At yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, we're, we're, yeah, so where Bob is you feels like it, it's Sokoban in, at its core, but it feels very distinct from, like, this is a person who's like, yes, I, I, I made a game inspired Sokoban, but like, I made it only in a way that I can make a game, you know? Mm. Yeah, so, like, I really like those games, like, for example, Bob is you, where, like, it's like, oh, hi, hi, it's it's a Sokoban, you're pushing blocks around. But yeah. then suddenly, it's like you're also pushing, like, the background of the entire game around. Because, yes. like, you broke the rules of the game. And it's like that moment of, like, oh, shit. Yeah. And that's, like, that. that's that kind of, like, because that's that unique touch, that human touch that you can get, like, not only in... It's not only it's not always like in a very personal story that I think you get that human touch. I think you can get it like, oh no, this is a mechanic that exists within this person's brain, and not everyone could come up with this. Mm. <laughs> Indeed. Whereas a lot of people could come up with a thing where you push boxes around inside of a warehouse, and you're a little guy. Yeah. And... Like. Like I don't want to, I don't want to sound like I'm slagging off any developers or anything, but there are a lot of very beautiful Sokoban games, yeah. and they have like gorgeous like pixel art and like really fun and cool music. But like at the end of the day, it's like you're just pushing boxes around a warehouse. Like it's a Sokoban. <laughs> Actually, now like, you've got me really thinking about Sokoban. <laughs> I kind of want to like, <laughs> what if I did? Because I'm realizing like, oh no, Sokoban is a bigger thing in Japan than it is in the U.S. Like it's more of yeah. a it's more of a staple yeah. than it is here. Mm. And like, what if I did a Sokoba? What if, what if, what if we like, <laughs> anyway. Sokoban issue. <laughs> yes, exactly. Like this is a very specific, like, let's, let's really dive into Sokoban and like explore it. And anyway, I'm thinking of things that I don't have time or money for, <laughs> but um, I really, this is see this is how I get sidetracked, and this is how we end up um, DMing some random person on Twitter and saying, "Do you want to guess it as a bonus issue?" Is like kind of. I'm sure we could put together, yeah, especially issue of Sokoban. Like, 
there are so many Sokoban games that we play for game jams. Yeah. And like I, I, I know I just made it sound like they're all the same, but they're not. You know, they're, right, they're right. all different. Yeah, so yeah, like, yeah. yeah. That good art. Yeah. I make I make they're fun all... of like roguelikes a lot, but they're not all the same. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How are roguelikes in Japan? Are they do they pollute everything? Yeah, basically. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone wants to make a roguelike Metroidvania. Okay, so it's all this, it's, the curse yeah. is, is spread across the world. Yeah, like everyone really loves um, Hollow Knight. Des like there's like basically five touchstone games that everyone pulls from. So like everything is either like Hollow Knight or Dark Souls or <laughs> no. yeah. 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 What? Castlevania is a knight. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. I was gonna say, what are what are sort of like the influential touchstones in Japan? Would you say for game design? Yeah. Yeah. Go on. What do you think are the big like influential games in Japan here? Uh, Slay the Spider. Uh, yeah. Slay the Spider. Yeah. Like everything. Like any game that has anything to do with like cards or like moving through different rooms in a dungeon. Like they all. <laughs> Like, I don't want to say they all look like Slay the Spider, but like very obviously the developers yeah. played and really liked Slay the Spider. Yeah, Which is fine because uh, I also like not Slay the only Spider. cut that yeah. uh, each stage mm -hmm. after each stage. Yeah, yeah, they, you know, we need to choose something. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> uh, upgrade stuff. Yeah. Oh, bread or something. Yeah, like, uh, after the developer inspired from this. Slay the Spider. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like there's. There's this um, shooting game that I really liked from one of the previous game jams where it's basically, you know, just a uh, side scrolling shoot 'em up. Um, but between each stage, it's like, do you want to get like the bullet, like the fast bullets, or do you want to get like the homing missiles or whatever? And so you have like this choice of two things and then you move on to the next stage. And it's all very like Slay the Spire ish. Like, yeah. even though I'm sure there were games before Slay the Spire that would have you choose between two different upgrades between stages. Like, it's. It really exploded after Slay the Spire. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've I've seen a lot of games that have like the exact same like card layout on the bottom of the screen as Slay the Spire. Yeah. It really stands out. Like at least put your cards in a different place. <laughs> Not make it so obvious. I guess it does like I guess standardize it though. Yeah. Because then yeah. like you see the game load up, it's like, oh okay, this is what I need to be doing. Yeah. Yes. Because it's like Slay the Spider. Let's play the Spire. Which, like, I, I don't mind it. Like, a lot of games that um, are influenced by Slay the Spire tend to be different. Oh, uh, yeah. Yes. Good. Yeah. Mm. They're also yeah. really good. But it's just that they all kind of tend to kind of tend to blend together at the end of, like, a long, like, play session of, like, 20 games. It's mm. like, we play, like, 10 Slay the Spire-ish games today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the kind of one. thing <laughs> where I'm very interested. Like, after, you know, 10 years later, which are, like, which are the games in the genre that stand out? Like, is it even going to be Slay the Spire, you know? What if there's, like, a Slay the Spire-inspired game that, like, 10 years from now, that's the one everyone, like, oh, this is really good. And mm. Slay the Spire is like, oh, this is the thing that inspired it. But it's always interesting to see, like, what what kind of, like, the legacy of, like, art is and what, what survives, what has... Mm staying power yeah but speaking of speaking of making games speaking of all this sort of stuff i'm kind of curious you as, as game developers i i want you to tell me kind of about the games that you yourself make oh, okay this is daikon's time daikon, yes okay. uh, <laughs> oh uh, i i like to uh, make uh party game okay <laughs> yeah but yeah for uh current uh recently i'm making uh nice disc Mm -hmm. And this game is four players battle game, mm -hmm. and uh, each player has to uh, slow flying disc and hit each other. Okay, yeah, it's uh, yeah, just messy <laughs> party <laughs> game. I I once had an idea for <laughs> a um a like a f a fake Mario Party game for like. Mm -hmm. For like, but like for like the old like Atari era of, <laughs> for like a company that wasn't real, but it was like their franchise Mario Party game, and mm -hmm. I like to just make up a lot of fake stuff. So like, <laughs> the idea of making up a fake company and all these fake games. <laughs> I once had the idea of making a, um, like a, instead of 
making games themselves, I would make instruction manuals for games as kind of like a way to get my ideas out of the, what the game would be. Oh, that's cool. It's like, like a game plan. Yeah, and I, and I would structure it as an instruction manual for fun. And <laughs> kind of like, oh. but then I, I did this, and hopefully, eventually... I will be able to it's make. It's kind of like that, yeah. So yeah. like, it's not it's not all that far off. Except instead of um, them being like quote unquote fake games, now it's like real games. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and hopefully, I'll be able to make games again someday. Yeah. So actually, we we're interested in your games. <laughs> mm, yeah. Oh, so, I mean, I now in the U.S. finally. So the last game I was making before I kind of said this sucks and i hate i do i don't want to make this game like eight hours long you know in order to sell it so I mean, indie apocalypse came about because i didn't want to make my games very long or make them like roguelikes in order to be able oh. to sell them but also <laughs> nobody buys games that are only a couple hours long so i was yeah. like well what if i make it so that everybody wants to buy games that are a couple hours long. And that's what I've been trying to do <laughs> in these yeah. past two years is yeah. make games that are like, or like and get people to get used to like, Oh no, it's actually totally fine. If you pay like $5 for like a, you know, like an hour long game and you feel satisfied by it. Mm. But, um, so I was making a wrestling game, like a professional wrestling game. <laughs> but where um but where it was like very so i don't i don't really i don't really care too much i like wrestling f like from afar you know i like professional wrestling at a distance like i like the idea of it mm. like i enjoy the concept of all the characters and these feuds and these like larger than life personalities but i don't want to watch four hour wrestling shows once a week <laughs> <laughs> but I like the 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 idea that it's sort of like um like it's it's very much like theater in a lot of ways. It's just kind yeah. of sports theater. It's a really yeah. it's a professional wrestling is a really weird thing, and it's like so strange. So awesome sports. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's so strange how it like exists and it feels like such a relic in some ways. But anyway, I like it a lot conceptually yeah. so i wanted to make a game of, but video games there aren't any video games that like recognize that wrestling is a performance like, mm. they're kind of like oh no wrestling it's like a sport it's a fighting game or whatever yeah so i wanted to make a game where wrestling was a performance so it was kind of like a um now luckily because they're releasing it in the u.s finally it was basically mm -hmm. um it was um it was basically live alive or live alive i forget which it is or live a live how you pronounced yeah. it yeah live live alive oh yeah so it was, it was basically that game like it would played on a grid like a real time grid and you would move around like that and then have like those like targeting zones mm. and then there would be like you know mario rpg style like little timing mini games and then you would play out you would like play out scripts kind of like free form improv scripts of like oh you need to lose this match but you also need to like make it really exciting or you need to be winning in the first half and that kind of thing but then i uh, <laughs> yeah i really enjoyed it i but like <laughs> i didn't want to make it super long <laughs> and that's where like <laughs> i had this thing where i was like yeah so I was like, had this idea from comics where I was like, you know, co comics would draw a lot of panels, but mm -hmm. I, I also would like to work in like really small resolutions. Mm -hmm. Like, like the old, like I, maybe I'll go as high as like the, like the Sega CD used to or something if I want to get really high res, but mm -hmm. I like to work in, I like the low fi of pixel art where it's like, Oh no, yeah. th these things are, you know, 32 by 32 pixels and mm. like how you can interpret like the um those art books that show how um you know those artists at square had interpreted you know his mm. art he's like this really like 
gorgeous illustrated like character and like mm. monster art and how they turned it down into like you know 50 by 50 pixels or something <laughs> and it's like wow yeah. you really mm-hmm. conveyed like the ideas of his like big sprawling illustrations and you managed to shrink them all down like that and i think it's a really cool art form mm. but um anyway the, 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 what was that there's a game that kind of reminds me of your wrestling game, um, but it instead of pro wrestling, it's like a Sentai kind of theme. Okay. It's called like Chroma, Chroma Squad, I yes. would say. Uh, that, is, that does sound familiar. I am familiar with that game, I think. I don't know how to, I don't know what it is as a game, but I do know it exists. Yeah, it's, it's like a, it's like a strategy RPG kind of grid where you're yeah. moving your characters around. Um, and the premise is that you're in charge of like this studio mm. that puts out like Sentai shows. And so you need to like defeat X amount of monsters on the show. Otherwise your ratings will go down, but also you can't just like totally steamroll everything because otherwise it's boring. So you have yeah. to like balance between making the show really exciting and oh, like okay. edge of your seat, mm-hmm. but also like you can't, you can't lose or something like mm-hmm. that. <laughs> okay. Or, now. Like, you- it has to be like a scripted yeah. scene where like this character has to lose it's something like that now i'm actually i'm actually like way yeah. more interested now because I, I i originally thought it was just like a tactics rpg but with like a sentai sort of like shell around it i did not realize mm-hmm. it was such strictly about like actually putting on a performance that's very cool actually yeah and so like you get like a budget of um like however much money you get from viewers and so if you have a lot of viewers then you have more money for your episodes which means that you can buy like better uh props and better uniforms and that kind of thing so it's, it's pretty it's pretty cool but okay the, yeah I, re- I really want to play your pro wrestling game <laughs> i mean you can f- somewhere buried <laughs> on my itch page is the like the the latest version i made it's okay still- i'll check it it is still kind of it's it's kind of kind of busted in some ways, you know. But I, I mean, think that's, that's what makes like indie games more charming if they're a little busted. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think maybe that will be my um, it's, if I if I go back into long form game development and release like a proper game, mm-hmm. I either want to make that actually, or I want to make a game inspired by simon's quest that's just kind of like oh. really confusing and yeah. dense and bewildering and that kind of thing mm. so i also uh, but i think the thing when i'm to get my get myself back in the gear i want to do if you're familiar with famicase I'm a case. Oh, I don't know. It's like an art project that I originally started in like, um, it was like, it was a gallery in Japan. I think it was called Meteor maybe, oh. but, it, but it was people making fake Famicom oh, cases. Oh, I'm looking at it now. It's yeah, you're right. It's Meteor. I, I, I have seen this. I've seen this on Twitter. I think. Mm. What, what's this? This is Shinigami. Hmm? What, what's this? My Fami, I know oh. you can make your own Fami case label, oh, fa- fa- Famicom oh. label like oh, this, yeah. and then oh cool <laughs> yeah the the example cartridge that they have on on the front page of Famicase dot com. Oh. The Japanese says <laughs> Sugushinu game, which means like die immediately game. <laughs> <laughs> and underneath that in English it says cave exploration game. It's totally different. It's totally different. <laughs> <laughs> But I, you know what? That sounds an awful like like spelunker to me. <laughs> I, the one, the one like cross cross country meme that never took off in the U.S. But I was aware of. I think that exists in Japan. Was around dying in spelunker, and I enjoyed it immensely. <laughs> That I, that wasn't a thing I imagined, right? Where people would do like very mundane things, and then they would do the spelunker dying animation. <laughs> hey, Meteor Club. But yeah, I'm just looking at all the Meteor stuff oh. now. <laughs> yeah, so they do like a Famicase is a once a year thing that they they run, and you know, oh. and anyone around the world can submit games 
or mm-hmm. submit their cases. And at least in the U.S., there is a once a year game jam called the Game by Its Cover. That is, oh. it says you can be. Insp- it's primarily. I think it started off, and I think primarily saying, "Hey, make games inspired by these Famicom cases." <laughs> like if you have the case that says Sugushino game, you have to make yeah. a game where you die immediately. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <In> a- <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's like you try to imagine what the game is inside of that. So that, um, so that's, that's what cool. I that's what I want to do is I want to like if I get time to get back into like game developments I want to like spend like a week or maybe a couple of weeks just like working just starting from the very beginning mm-hmm. and just and making like, one game for each of these right just making one game for each of these it's just like a project to get like run through a lot of different ideas and like, you know, kind of like sketching, but the game design version of sketching where maybe it's not perfect. Maybe it's like clunky, (laughs) but it's like, ah, I just kind of jam something out just to get, just to practice and get to have a lot of like mechanics. And so then like later, if I wanted to use like a game that's like taking photos, I might have like this photo system or whatever that I can just plug into a different game. Mm-hmm. But yeah, like actually, Daikon when he makes his games, uh, like he makes game jam games, and then he tends to recycle a lot of the, the like background like engines or background like yeah. mechanics of mm. those game jam games into like his like long form games. It's yeah. the smartest mm. thing to do. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I when I when I was playing through all the Dragon Quest games like a year or so ago, I was like. H- Oh, they can churn out so many of these because they reuse maps and stuff like that, and they reuse so much assets. Mm-mm. It's like, oh, that's really <laughs> smart. <laughs> of like, yeah. Dragon Quest Two is just like, oh, it's the Dragon Quest One map, but then a lot more other stuff too. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then you have like the like Dragon Quest Builders, which is like it's Dragon Quest One all over again. <laughs> yeah, it's. An interesting approach to it, and it's, um, um, speaking of, but speaking of working on games and game engines, I have another question here, which I, I it's nice to have actually, it's kind of almost nice to have questions kind of prepared ahead of time. Maybe I should prepare questions ahead of time more often. Um, <laughs> but you, t- you talk a lot about Unity Room and how Unity Room was like, um, you know, probably like the most pop. Is it like the word you say is like the most popular place to just put like indie games in Japan, if not? Is, is Unity Room the most popular place? Probably yeah. the most popular place is DL site and okay. Free. Yeah, Free DL site. Yeah. yeah. But like those those two sites, like they're they're not explicitly for games. You're they're right. just like like ev- everything, right? Yeah, but it's really old, Dojin site. Yeah. Yeah. So like it's it's basically like a Dojin site, which is like uh like a fan like fan uploaded stuff so like you yeah. can make comics like fan comics and upload them there yeah. uh, and art and also of course games mm-hmm. um yeah but it's, since it's... yeah they're, they're too broad so like right. it we we find that it's really hard to look explicitly for like games um, yeah and pt room is like just browser games it, it was a very weird thing as a as a minor sidebar when you get into um indie stuff in japan because at least, like, gr- growing up, Dojin meant a very specific thing in America. Mm-hmm. It did not have, like, that same broad uh, fan work connotation. It was more like a very specific slice of fan work, so perhaps. <laughs> <laughs> the, if, you, if you, I don't recommend you usually search, type um, Dojin into your, um, your U.S. search bar. It, it's if you, not explicitly yeah. that in and as well but right. also there is kind of that connotation because like as you will see if you go to dl site or frame there's a lot of um spicy stuff <laughs> yes 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 let's just say if you were going to dojin sites through anime web turnpike you would find it yeah <laughs> you would find not just independently created works yeah <laughs> but um uh, but but my 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 long my long road that i've been traveling down to get to my question is Unity Room focuses, I imagine, primarily on Unity. But how off, how popular are like um, in Japan are more specialized engines like RPG Maker or like Bitsy or any of those other like small specific mm-hmm. engines? 
RPG Maker is pretty big. Yeah, right? yeah. RPG Maker is yeah, really popular. Like I, mm. I don't know what the exact stats are, but usually if you go to, um, if you type in like indie, dojin games on like Twitter, you yeah. usually find lots of RPG Maker and Action Skuru. Action Skuru, it's yeah. And it's same series. Yeah. It's different group in Kadokawa. I don't know. Yeah, but is this is also Kadokawa. Oh. Yeah. So like, there's this. I I don't know if it's also in English, but there's this. Um, program called Action Skuru, which is basically the same as RPG Maker, except instead of RPGs, it's like action game, like parts. So like you can make like a shooting game, or you can make mm. like a side-scrolling platformer. Um, and it's published by the same uh, company, but a different branch. Is that what? You yeah, think? I guess. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Mm. I, I guess. Yeah. yeah. And so I I haven't seen a lot of that in English, but no. um, Japanese. Indie uh, devs really like that as well. Mm. So like you'll see a lot of side-scrolling games that were made in action scooter or like shoot em, shoot 'em ups mm -hmm. that were made in action scooter. Um, also, Pico Eight is yeah, it's not mm. like the most popular, but it is pretty popular, and they've got a very loyal fan base online. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like I... Japanese Pico Eight users. Yeah, I was that, that was something I was very curious about because I come across a lot of like you know. Pico 8 and Ren Pi. I see there's a lot of Ren Pi in the US. Mm -hmm. A lot of like, you know, stuff because people want to make games, but they don't want to learn how to code, which, you know, I'm the same way. Yes. <laughs> so a lot of these kind of like prefab, more specialized engines, they're like, oh, well, you know, you're not going to make a mm -hmm. like <laughs> a shooter in Ren Pi, but <laughs> you don't want to make a shooter. You just want to make a visual novel. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so like I I don't know the name of like because there is a visual novel engine here. I don't think it's Renpai though because I think Renpai is not in Japanese. I don't. Yeah, yeah I'm not guess. sure. Yeah. But, uh, Unity assets. Yeah. Uh, Utage is really uh, popular. Uh, not not game engine, but popular uh, novel game uh, platform. Oh. Uh, Utage. Utage. Mm -hmm. So there's. I guess a Unity asset called Utage. Yeah. Okay. Where you can, yeah, like visual novels in Unity. That I mean, that makes a lot of sense because then Unity just publish. You can just port Unity to whatever, where you can't port like a more specialized engine to consoles as easily. Yeah. What? Oh, and then there, what is that one that's on Switch? Like, oh, I forgot that. Like Mini Com. Puchikong. Puchikong. Yeah, Puchikong is also popular. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there's but only. Yeah. I don't know if it's in English. So like, there's this, um, there's this program game on Switch that's called Puchikong, and it's basically like it. It's like a little game engine on on the Switch, and it's it's programming in Basic, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Basic. Yeah. Okay. Mm. And so that also is pretty popular, but the problem is that you can only play Puchikong games in Puchikong. Right. So you can't export it out of that. Mm. So, but that's also a pretty active community. Like, there's mm. like a surprising amount of like little pockets that are very like um, fiercely loyal fans are part of. Yeah. <laughs> well, that, that goes like, all the way back to like the, the Famicom, right? Where you can make like, I don't know if you can make games, but it at least had like, uh, weren't there, weren't there um, like Famicom games i guess you call them where it's like this is basic coding in basic or something or am i thinking of something else like what 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 was it in like the the disk system you can rewrite the cartridges or something like oh, <laughs> oh maybe yeah because yeah. the u.s never got the disk system so there was like a thing where you could take a cartridge to like the store and then you would like like rent or do something no you don't uh uh Okay, maybe maybe I'm making stuff up. <laughs> You're right. Ah, here we go. Maybe. Yes. Sorry, I, I I've been on a I've been on a journey trying to find this action game <laughs> screw. Ah, um, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Pixel Maker M Pixel Game Maker MV. So maybe it is in the U.S. Oh, really? Pixel Game yes, Maker. Yes, it's, it's, it's it goes it go it's under um, Pixel Game Maker MV, I believe. Oh. Yes, this is it, I think. Okay. Oh. Yeah, by Kadokawa Corporation. Oh, yeah. Same make, um, RPG maker. Yeah, action game scooter. Oh, uh, not the style. It's, oh. Uh... 
Yeah, this is it. Yeah, MVP. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> huh. I wonder. Has a pretty decent, uh, a pretty sizable fan base mm -hmm. of people who make games on this. Ninety dollars, maybe not. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> yeah. I was like, maybe I could just get that. That would save me a lot of time, but no, I already, I already spent all my money on my on Game Maker. I don't need to get another thing. Uh, on oh, Game Maker, well, is there a lot of people on Game Maker? Game Maker, ah, uh, oh, recently, mm. oh, I I yeah, I, I don't know of any people personally, but right. like I. Think there are some people. There, there must be some Japanese I mean, people. I mean, there's there's people. classical, classically, what's his, I don't know if he has a name, you know, Cave Story. Isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, that I think yeah. it's made in Game Maker. And, you know, mm. I'm sure the the popularity of Undertale maybe skewed a couple of people towards Game Maker. I think Pixel. So the, the guy who made Cave Story. I yes, that's, yep, there it is. That's the name. I kept wanting to call him Cave. I'm like, that's not Cave. Cave is a different studio. <laughs> His game is Cave Story. Yeah. <laughs> Cave makes shooters. Cave makes Toho games, I think. Or just shooters. One of the two. Mm -hmm. But, um... It's the game maker 75% off on Steam right now. <laughs> oh, but it's still expensive. Oh, no. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Yeah, still, still very expensive. And if you already have Unity or something else, you probably just stick to that. Yeah. <laughs> Wait for it to go. Those engines usually go on super stuff. But part of me looks at that like, wow, what if I? And I'm now I'm still thinking about it, like, what if I just got that? I could probably make games really quickly. In that. <laughs> okay, I've got a. <laughs> I I listen. I'll, I'll think about it. I'm think, I'm thinking about it now. <laughs> Uh, maybe I'll watch some tutorials or something or ask if other people have used it and how fast it is to make games in because maybe that's my solution is like mm -hmm. just making something that's – who knows? No, I, I'm a weird guy. I, I always want to make something like – you know, I'll, I'll too quickly run to this very specific edge case that is very important to something that I do. Mm -hmm. But well, I, won't... I mean like – yeah, even, even if like – it doesn't end up being the final game. You could probably do like a mock-up really quickly and something like this. And then oh, yeah. you, really like that, you could like make remake it like to be like full, fully featured in like right. Unity or something. Right. Yeah. And then I would have all the assets anyway. So yeah. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, we're, we're not going to get too distracted with me thinking about making games. I'm <laughs> getting the itch. <laughs> it's been too long. <laughs> I kind of like I think I think I I kind of dedicated myself to making like um these you know these three tabletop games per issue which takes mm -hmm. some of my game making time but I'm almost done with that mm -hmm. and I kind of just want to get into the the business of it all <laughs> but who knows mm. it's very very um a lot of I um anyway I got I got one left. Let me actually I forgot. Let me just check just to make sure. This very rarely <laughs> happens. Okay, and today is no different. Um, I was just checking to see if there were user questions. They very rarely are. Um, mm -hmm. Through I would say a lack of users or <laughs> a lack of viewers perhaps in the audience. But um, I've got one more question. This is this question is from a pizza pranks I believe. <laughs> Oh, no, it says Andrew. It says, please call me Andrew. Please never call me pizza. Never call me pizza pranks. Just use my name, please. Um, and it says, uh, what's your favorite game? Something nice and broad. Hey. Yeah. So, um, and you can interpret actually, that however you like as well. As as a side note, we've been calling you Pizza pranks So, like, when I've been telling the other developers, like, oh, here's the money from Pizza pranks <laughs> Oh, I mean, it's definitely more identifiable than Andrew. <laughs> <laughs> if I don't, oh, yeah. if, if you call me pizza pranks in a farce and Andrew isn't around to hear it, does he get upset? <laughs> the answer is no. But the yes, I, I I apologize. I've been calling you pizza pranks on it. Oh like no! Knows. Like I said, it's actually perfectly fine as long as you're not calling me pizza pranks to my face or my okay. digital face <laughs> in this situation. 
Um, <laughs> it doesn't bother me then. <laughs> okay, that's good. But uh, our favorite game. Well, oh, Deco, do you want to go first? Okay. I I like Netketsu Koshin Kyoku. This is a spin off game of Levasti Lansan.、Mm -hmm. Mini game Levasti Lansan. Yeah, so like you, you know the, the, fam, the NES game,、uh, River City Ransom. Yes, yes. It's, it's based on the Japanese game, which is Nekketsu Kunyoku. Nekketsu, yeah, yeah. Nekketsu Downtown. Downtown Nekketsu series. Yeah. yeah. And it's like a whole series of these games. And、oh, one I, of them. Oh, I know about、like、Kunio Kun. A... Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> and like. Uh, one of the games in this series is like a sports day. Yes,、yeah, sports day. Okay. okay.、Yeah. And I think I know exactly what that game is too, as well. Did that appear in, in America? I, I've never played any of these games, to be no, honest. No, no, it's, I, no. There's like、oh, River City Ransom, and that's pretty much it. I think, they, I, think、oh, actually, I think they brought over a collection kind of recently of some of the Kunio Kun games. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. So, like in, in Japanese society, there's Sports Day, which、um, I'm sure that you know if, if you've watched any anime. Yeah. Where it's, yeah, it's just a day where like, the whole school does sports. Oh, and we, just... have, we have that in the US too. At,、oh, really? least, I, I, at I least I did it in, ele <laughs> I did in elementary school. I, I, we, had, we called it Field Day, but we did have it. It just didn't go beyond elementary school. I, I don't remember if we had that at my school. Maybe、oh. we were not very active. <laughs> <laughs> But、uh, so in Japan, what they do is they split the school into like white team and red team.、Um, and so, like, each class like each class is split, or like. Yeah, it, well, my school is each, each class. Yeah. So, like, half of the students are on the white team and half of the students are on the red、mm. team. And this is for like all grades. So, like, you know, you have like first graders and sixth graders on the same, like, quote unquote side.、Mm. Um, and they compete in all of these events and try to get more points for whichever. Whichever side.、Mm -hmm. um, and the downtown series also does that, right? Yeah. So it's... Four schools battle yeah.、Uh, mini game. Yeah. Yeah. So four schools are like fighting against each other to, to yeah, in all these like these sports、mm -hmm. events. Yeah. Yeah. If, if you've ever played any of Nice Gear games stuff, so Daikon's games,、um, they're all very obviously inspired. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I <laughs> Perfect. Yeah, there is. Yeah, I think that's, that's, I mean, that's a lot of reason also why I wanted to have this issue. is I think, you know, people have this very specific. Listen, I grew up as a teen, and if nothing, if I was a teen who was into anime and、mm. manga, <laughs> and as a proud New Englander, I view my life in terms of shame. <laughs> so. <laughs> I was like, you know, you know, there's a lot of there's a lot of teens who have like a very specific like their version of Japan comes from like the most popular anime and manga of their day, you know, when they were teens. And、so、I was like, well, part of this issue is like, you know, that it's just a, it turns out it's a country full of people who all have different things that they like,、mm -hmm. <laughs> and they all yeah, have、that's... these different influences that you that don't come across in what you think you know. And part of this is like, hey. Here's a little glimpse into just this little sliver of a world, you know? Yeah,、anyway. so like, even as we were putting the issue together,、um, we were surprised by some of the influences that the developers were telling us. Because, like, we were, you know, we were making the,、mm. the pages and asking developers, like, you know, what, what games influenced you and, like, why and what, like, what about those games like, impacted your game design?、Mm -hmm. um, and, like, so as one example, the Kitsune and Tanuki game, the, the point and click one where you're searching for objects around, like, this traditional house. Yeah. Like, ask that developer, like, what inspired you to make this game? And he said,、um, Shenmue. Because. <laughs> <laughs> And we just like fell over laughing, like Shenmue. And he's like, Yeah, this, like this game is like my version of Shenmue because in Shenmue, you can like, you know, it's this totally free open world where you can like open drawers and like dig around in like other people's like belongings and try to like, like understand like the inner lives of all of these characters. <laughs> yeah. And that's what I wanted to do with Fox and Tanuki. And we're just like, Oh my God, really? Like, that's so cool. <laughs> <laughs> 
People forget Sh- Shenmue was like the first walking simulator, you know? <laughs> Ten years before Gone Home, there was Shenmue. Yeah. <laughs> so we thought that he was going to say like, like you know, like a point and click game or something or yeah. like a hidden object kind of thing. But he's like, no, Shenmue. <laughs> uh, honestly, honestly, more people should be in. I, I deeply love Shenmue. <laughs> It's it's so like very specific, and there's kind of like nothing else like it, besides like Shenmue Two, and and maybe Yakuza is like kind of Shenmue adjacent, but not quite. Yeah. Yeah. It's, so if if any of your listeners are listening to this and they bought the the bonus issue, like please play the Fox and Tanuki game, and keep in mind that it's supposed to be Shenmue. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's... yeah. Up, up to what else? There was another game that we were really surprised by. Ah, uh... the Kiss Fish game, right? Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Kiss Fish. Ah, yeah. yeah. So it was like the, we asked the Kiss Fish developer, like, what inspired you to make this game? And we thought it would be like a sim game or something. Yeah. But instead, it was Hollow Knight. <laughs> Because in Hollow Knight, like everything around you is super dark, except for your character who's like really bright yeah. in the darkness. And it's supposed to show that like there's hope and light even in like this dark and like terrible place. And so that developer was like, okay, what if I did that, but in like the deep sea? And so like you're in this deep sea, which is supposed to be really scary and whatever, but also you're this colorful, bright fish in, in this dark place. And so that was their influence it's like wow seriously yeah, yeah. All of it? <laughs> but understand yeah. yeah it's like it mm. makes sense when you hear mm. it but then like the our first reaction is like hollow knight this has nothing yeah. to do with hollow knight and then you get the explanation it's like oh it is hollow knight yeah <laughs> yeah, right. yeah i think mm. that's an interesting kind of right right it's sort of like do you just make slay the spire or do you make a game that is in your heart what slay the spire means to you you know Exactly. Yeah. And that kind of yes, it's what a I yeah, the, yeah. like what influences people is interesting. And sometimes it is people wear their influences on their sleeves, <laughs> like <laughs> rather obviously. Yeah. And sometimes it's you know it comes off as like maybe you had like this very specific idea from this very specific game or this movie and you brought that straight mm-hmm. into like I this very tiny moment hit me in a game. It's like, oh, well, I'm going to bring that idea into, you know, that's how I came across the wrestling games. Like, I liked the way that, like, that very specific movement style of Live Alive. And Live Alive has a live alive. I, see, I've been saying it wrong my whole life. <laughs> uh, but, I mean, it even has, like, a wrestler in it. And I liked that idea of like grid based movement so you could have very specific positioning because part of like what makes those um like wrestling games kind of awkward for that sort of thing is positioning things around is very difficult in like a open 3d space mm-hmm. or even like a like a more specific 2d space but if you can say like you know my drop kick is going to travel three blocks you know three mm-hmm. spaces you you can more succinctly kind of nail things down but now i'm just now i'm just thinking about this game a lot and like oh, how do i make it how do i make it you know <laughs> but um play andrew's wrestling game yeah <laughs> so yeah i really likes pro wrestling yeah yeah i i i watched some new japan stuff in getting preparation for this game because like i said i never watched wrestling growing up mm. or or even now but i want to watch like understand like the flow of matches and that kind of thing mm-hmm. like, like what is like what goes on during a wrestling match mm-hmm. so i i but also like i said they're so long <laughs> yeah <laughs> just I don't want to have any recommendations to learn pro wrestling <laughs> I'll, I'll find i'll at least i i'm going to hold off for now because i i need to stay I think I'm going to do my Famicase thing first, and my wrestling game is going to live on in the background, but one of these <laughs> days, mm-hmm. my dream when my dream is, you know, maybe when I can get a different <laughs> maybe when I can quit my job and do this full time, I will have time on the side. But speaking of time on the side, we're running out of time here, actually. Oh. 
It all goes by to... so quickly. That mm. goes really fast. <laughs> but we're approaching our hour, and I'm staring at my food, and it's a little uh, container. And I'm like, I'm getting hungry. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Oh. You... <laughs> no, no. But I'm, I'm. We're at an hour. We're wrapping this up. I so. Rencon, Daikon, do you have anything else you wanna wanna say last minute? Not not to promote you. We'll get to that in a moment. But and see now the thing I said I wasn't gonna do, which was talk very quickly, I just started doing without helping myself. But um Do you have any other last things you want to say on the show before um, we close it down? Yeah, so I guess for for my part, um, I really appreciate uh, the opportunity both to work on the bonus issue, and mm -hmm. I really also appreciate the the fact that Indie Apocalypse exists. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know of any, I mean, yeah, like reading that rock paper shotgun article was really shocking to me because I couldn't imagine before that someone was making like a zine with indie games and actually paying developers, which mm -hmm. I thought was really. Uh, admirable and really mm -hmm. uh, amazing um, and it really like just speaking to the developers that we worked on for the bonus issue like they also were really like surprised at that this exists and they were all really happy that uh, yeah. they could take part in it that's, that's yeah. good to hear because <laughs> I have this is my first time where I have like zero contact between myself and the the developers and occasionally yeah. I will get one of those like in my Google form, I have that, that, you know, any, you know, that miscellaneous questions, question thing. Mm. And sometimes yeah. people will be just, will just use it for a thank you, which is nice to get and very yeah. strange, but. And like, especially I think, um, like Japanese developers in like, this is just my opinion. I don't know if this is true, but they tend to be really like, like a skittish around like anything that's uh, very English heavy. Okay. And so I don't know if any of the devs that we contacted would have, um, reached out on their own um and so i think they appreciated that uh that there was like a special bonus issue that was for like japanese developers yeah Degawa, do you have any last comments or last yeah. message yeah uh thank you <laughs> <laughs> no thank the both of you this <laughs> yeah apocalypse is really nice and uh, and we edit uh, in this scene and it it was really fun yeah and you could contact a lot of developers and um, we made friends. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so seriously, this was an awesome opportunity. Yes. Well, yeah. Thank you. Hopefully, thank you. hopefully you can do it again in the future, you know? The, yeah. The dream of Indie Apocalypse Presents is the, is that it's like, hey, the idea is like, oh, well, I, I, gave, you, I gave you a kickstart, you know, <laughs> and hopefully it'll give you the resources and like the, the know-how to like, then the future people can just do it without me, you know, because I'm very busy. <laughs> I can't. Do... Yeah, you have a lot of plates yeah. spinning in the back. <laughs> I, I have so I have so many plates spinning around. I've got at least at least two more. <laughs> I've got potentially two more bonus issues like coming down the pipe, you know, of people I'm working with. No, actually, potentially four. I have so many. I've got so many. <laughs> But like, I like to work with people. I like to connect with people where I can, you know, I like to put people together and have like, you know, mm. like to hang out and meet people. Yeah, definitely. This has been a yeah, great chance to do exactly that. Thank you. <laughs> I, I wish part of me was like, I should have had other people on the show as well, but I was like, you know, mm. I didn't want to schedule. I was lazy. <laughs> and then I used I used an excuse of like, ah, well, I don't want to have multiple quick reckless english speakers on this episode i gotta calm it down a little and use this a special featured issue and really mm -hmm. it gets hard sometimes to schedule people I, I, and i, 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 I i've fallen I out of practice <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> but i get this is me mentioning it so many times so that i will remember to do it on monday because i don't work mm -hmm. on the weekends oh <laughs> Oh, the the last thing I wanted to ask was was that co was that cover a painting originally? Yeah, so actually, so it's a it's not a painting, okay. but it's originally a drawing. Okay, and then Go and on. then Michi Michi the artist, um, they scanned it in and then colored it on their iPad or their PC. Uh, yeah, iPad. Clip Studio. Clip Studio. I, yeah, I okay. don't know. So, so, yeah. Mm. Anyways, mm. they they digitally painted it. 
Um, and then that was the digital painting is the cover for the zine itself. And then they, as a bonus, they painted it, the, they watercolored it, uh, the original drawing, and then mailed it to us. And so that watercolor version is hanging in our house. So yes, that's, that's why I asked because yeah. I saw that. I was like, <laughs> that's very cool. <laughs> I have yeah, the we're most really recent. <laughs> The most recent issue okay. is um is a it's a sculpture. It, it's sculpted like it's a like a rabbit. Oh, yeah, the rabbit one is it's sculpted, so it's like uh, that kind of um I forget I don't know what you call it because I'm not a sculptor, but it's like mm. a it's oh. like a type of like sculpting painting or something where it's like I don't like, know how to like, describe it, but like I don't know, anyway. I don't know the like in relief or something yes that no. sounds correct i'm gonna i'm gonna trust you on that one i i don't know either i'm just but, making stuff up. <laughs> but they're mailing me that and i'm very excited about it oh that's cool mm -hmm. i'm very excited yeah. to get that eventually um we don't have a lot of art at all in our house but we have that that painting now and it's just hanging up as a reminder of indie apocalypse <laughs> oh, perfect listen i listen who knows i might I might even do this. I'm listen. I might even do this again. I, I, I like, I part, you know, to, to atone for the sins of the past. I very much want to be, especially cause like when, you know, people had a lot of, um, there was a lot of English Twitter going on about Elden Ring and Japanese mm -hmm. design. A lot of people saying a lot of suspect sort of stuff. And I, <laughs> I'm like, uh, you know, <laughs> You know, like the most popular game of the day does not define all of Japanese studios, you know, in game development in Japan. Yeah. But, what would you say is like a trend in current Japanese game? My Elden Ring is a big one. Uh, <laughs> but they were like, people were going. <laughs> like in terms of like indie games, a lot of them tend to go on phone. It's what, yeah. in yeah. our experience. Yeah. And so like even like Unity Room, a lot of them instead of porting their games to like Steam or something, they'll port it to like Android. And so that's why even in this issue that the bonus issue, some of them are in like the phone aspect. Yeah. Um yeah, mm -hmm. because they they want to put it on phone rather than on PC cuz that's that's basically where like most indie games like kind of go cuz there isn't really an itch yeah. presence and like unless Unless you have like a really strong social media presence, nobody's gonna find your DL site or frame games either. Right. So, yeah. Usually, just they just go straight to phone, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Fun. That's fine. And so, actually, you can find a lot of like really cool, um, like little indie games on Japanese uh, mobile, uh, Japanese smartphones. <laughs> mm. A lot of escape room games. Awesome. Well, that's a tricky thing. I uh, I don't have a Japanese smartphone. <laughs> Yeah, that's yeah, that's the other thing. They're all like region I think. Yeah. <laughs> so it's kinda hard to recommend them overseas, but yeah. <laughs> so just head over wait a couple of wait a year or so to when you can go over to Japan, then go over to Japan. <laughs> and get uh, a Japanese phone. <laughs> yeah. Download a lot of games and then bring them home. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> do it do it like you know the the game journalists used to do when they used to go over to um tgs and buy a bunch of neo geo carts and then <laughs> fill up a suitcase full of japanese games and bring yeah. them back and be like look what i got it's <laughs> it's how uh, oh no well no i couldn't it's you know i i, I couldn't think of one i felt it's garo mark of the wolves no, <laughs> but which is also now easily available in the U.S. Mm -hmm. What is what is the name of that Akihabara Expo, the indie game one? Indie. Yeah, that was Dejige Haku. Okay. Yeah, so there's an expo in Akihabara called mm. Dejige Haku. It's like dej digital games. Eto. <laughs> what is Haku? <laughs> Haku. Eto. Exhibition. Uh, exhibition. Mm. Oh, I knew and... that. Oh, there you go. You learned now that you say that, I'm like, yes, Haku is exhibition. <laughs> <laughs> and when is that? That's in October. When do we go? Maybe October. Yeah, yeah. It, it's in the autumn. Like in the autumn. Yeah. 
I forget when, but like if you search for Dejigehaku, it's in Akihabara. So uh, if if you want to time your visit to Japan to <laughs> yeah <laughs> to check out some of the indie games here, uh, yeah, come to Dejigehaku in Akihabara. One one of these days, you know. <laughs> one of these. Listen, I, I I love I love games, you know. Yeah. I'm just a bit. I'm just a big fan of the medium, and I want to do what I can for it. And one of these days, when I get a lot of money somehow, when there's, I get a weird windfall of cash, <laughs> and my my Japanese is up to snuff. Because I want to do. I also like. I would love to if I could like port weird old games. You know. I'm I'm intermittently obsessed with um, a game called I think it's called La Place No Ma. I don't know what? how. You say it. I don't know what La Place turns into in, if I were to say it properly. But La it was. La Puras no more. Do you know this, Daigo? Oh, I don't know. But this it was. On it's an... PC. Oh. It's like. Yeah, it's like an old RPG, but mm. it's kind of like um, it's like this sort of like Lovecraft inspired RPG. It might have mm. even been inspired by like the old like the tabletop like call of cthulhu system or something because it's very much like i'm a debutante and i am a reporter and it's like its approach mm. to, to like character classes was very interesting mm. but like i'm maybe there's a good english patch last time i looked there was a very incomplete english patch oh but and this is released outside of japan oh uh -huh. i've never heard of this game they go on that uh, i haven't yeah Oh, they also made that Shadowrun. They also made the one Shadowrun game for the for the Mega CD mm -hmm. that I can't play because I think that was I don't know if that has it also has a translation, but it's that that Japan only Shadowrun mm -hmm. game. It's a Japan only Shadowrun game. Yeah. That, did you did you ever play that? No. <laughs> Shadowrun. <laughs> Which is really weird. I didn't know Shadowrun was like big enough in Japan to be like have it have an exclusive game. <laughs> yeah, I I don't I don't know if it is because like when I talk to people about um, Shadowrun Returns, yeah, like nobody knows what I'm talking about. I'm like it's like the return of Shadowrun. That's why it's called Shadowrun Returns. I'm like what is Shadowrun? I'm like <laughs> <laughs> maybe was, maybe they're just like maybe it was like very popular like during like the early or like the mid '90s or whatever. And then just like it didn't carry, it didn't have the same kind of staying power as like a D and D or something. Maybe, yeah. But okay, listen. Before we go down a hole of like, I didn't realize that they had published like Japanese had in Japan they had published like people's like board game sessions, <laughs> and that's where like Lodos War comes from and everything. Yeah, like there's. Like, there's been this big boom, um, not recently, but, like, for, like, the last five years or, or or so. And just, it just, this boom just keeps getting bigger and bigger of, like, board games and, hmm. like, tabletop games. And, like, especially because of the pandemic. Like, everyone's stuck inside. So, like, let's, yeah. you know, buy a lot hmm. of board games. Um, there's a really big um, yeah. event, Game of Market, that yep. is twice a year. And it's, it's basically Comic Kit, but for board games. And so... It's this huge convention mm. at, um, with like just tons and tons and tons of board games, and like some of them are like independently published, but recently they're more commercial titles there. But I don't know, independent title is also many. Yeah, mm. so there are a lot of like mm. um, board games and like not so much now because of the pandemic, but there used to be a lot more board game cafes and things like that where right. you could go and hang with your friends mm. and do tabletop stuff. Well, yeah. I'm, you know what, you know what happened? The thing happened again where I was like, I'm going to shut down the show. And then I started talking for half an hour. I kept talking, <laughs> which is the mistake of this thing. It's like, it's when I call this like in like an after, like an after party hangout, because it is that thing where everyone's like, yeah, I better go home to my, I'm going to go head back to my hotel room. But then nobody goes home and everyone just kind of sits around for another 30 minutes. Mm. <laughs> but this time I'm actually, I'm putting my foot down. <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm ending the sh I'm clicking on studio mode so that I can transition to my ending my ending title card. Okay. 
and I'm going to ask you, hey, what would you like to promote as you uh, as we shut the show down? Where can people find your stuff? Yeah. Um, so you can find our website at yeah. nicegear.games. Oh, such a good um, URL. You got the you got the good one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> we had to get it because it's like it's open. Just yeah. grab it there. Um, that has all of our um, all of our stuff. You can also find um, Daikon on Twitter at at Nice Gear Games. Hmm. Um, I no longer have a Twitter because Twitter is bad for me. But <laughs> yeah, you but Daikon... I wish I did have one. <laughs> I've gotten very good at just not using it. Yeah. <laughs> It's been it's been like a good detox away from Twitch. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so you can find uh, our stuff there. Um, yeah. We also stream our happy hour shows on Friday nights in Japan. So in America, that's when is that? Thursday morning, maybe? No, no, Friday morning. Got it? I don't I don't know time zone. Yeah, me either. <laughs> yeah, okay. maybe very early on Friday mornings. Um, so you can find those links on. Uh, both the Twitter and also uh, the Nice Gear Games website. But they're yeah. all archived, of course, right? Yeah, they're all archived. So you yes. can check them out after, yep. after the air. Indeed. Perfect. Perfect. And for my part, you know what I have to say. Buy Indiepocalypse, you know? It's a good thing. Yeah. If you like to listen to these people, why not buy that Indiepocalypse Presents, that yeah. Indie Sushin, that... Uh, one yeah. of these days, I'm going to practice. I'm going to hit that T so hard properly. Uh, uh, um, you know what is Famitsu? Yeah, Famitsu. So, yeah, the magazine. It's, so it's Famicom Tsushin. And so we just copy them and it's called ours Indie Tsushin. <laughs> <laughs> so if you, yeah. if you want to call it Insu, that's the shortcut. <laughs> oh, perfect. Perfect. Yeah. What a... You learn something new every day. Watch, but you know what? Like I'm saying, buy that issue. There's a lot of. If you want to play a bowling game like you never played before, why head over yeah. to that issue? You will be pleasantly or, surprised at every yeah, game or, there. Fox and Tanuki and see how similar it is to Shenmue. Yes, <laughs> and give you a new appreciation. Dig out your Dreamcast and then play Shenmue. Yeah. What a what a treat of a game! Hi. Okay. <laughs> I also I would also like to promote Shenmue. Um, yeah. <laughs> whatever bad rap it got, it's so. It's it's so it's, it's something. There's nothing like it. It's such. Yeah. I it's love very that. Monument. Yeah, I, like I love that. You've played games that build off of it. <laughs> yeah, I love that game. It's so. <laughs> it's so so singular. Mm -hmm. So like, I get why a lot of people would hate it. Also. <laughs> Because nothing happens, and so I really enjoy um, the, the the film Jean Dielman. Jean Dielman, I don't know how to pronounce it fully, but it's also like four hours of nothing happening. <laughs> but it's very meaning. It's very meaningful nothing. Um, but uh, that's not for everybody. But you know, give Shenmue a shot. You know, I hear they made a third one. That's not great. <laughs> but the first one's really cool. Um, Second one's not bad. You can play Lucky Hit in it. Or rather, encourage other people to play it. And I like that a lot. But um, Indie Pockets, uh, buy it. Yeah, games inspired by Shenmue, the Indie Pockets bonus issue. <laughs> yes, exactly. Oh, yes. Yeah. So welcome to my Shenmue game jam, where we make 10 games inspired by Shenmue. We're... Whoa, whoa, what if there was like a okay now i'm gonna head of myself in the idea of making a collaborative um community space <laughs> that is like everybody makes their own piece of a town that is a part of a shenmue game mm. uh, okay i'm getting ahead of myself now but i think that sounds very cool if you make like a metaverse like a sandbox thing but yes. like with no enemies and just <laughs> people can like their own Shenmue corner. <laughs> right, right. Or it's like somebody's making like their act their like adventure RPG or whatever, but I'm making I'm in charge of making the liquor store, so I can make the liquor store however I want to. <laughs> ah, that's a weird collaborative approach to game design. That's something mm -hmm. So if you go to indiepocalypse.com slash Patreon, it'll help me get money to go so I can do weird stuff like this. If I had <laughs> 
real famous indie person money, I would just spend it on dumb bullshit <laughs> in the name of art. Um, important bullshit, though. <laughs> exactly. I think it's very important bullshit. I think people need, frankly, more bullshit in their lives. More, like, stuff that isn't, like, perfectly metacritic you know? Let's polish more jank. <laughs> yeah, I... Listen, I love... My... I love Dragon's Dogma, <laughs> which I think is, yeah, it's like, what if, what if a FromSoft game was like super janky and weird, but I, I, I deeply love it. Dragon, that was one of your favorite games, right? Dragon's Dogma. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, okay. Kindred Spirits here. I am a huge fan. I've played through it twice. I think I'm a huge fan of Dragon's Dogma. This is oh. extremely <laughs> it's it's so good <laughs> it's like busted in some ways but i okay anyway anyway this is tur- before this turns into me gushing about dragon's dogma after i pivoted from gushing about shenmue <laughs> um anyhow that's that's mm-hmm. it i'm gonna wrap up the show i oh okay yeah but I, yeah thanks Frank, for Frank Con, thank, yeah. thank you both for being here yeah, thank you. It was really fun. Maybe we'll be here again someday. There are some people who can only do seven p.m. shows, seven p.m. my time. Mm. So occasionally we gotta do people on the other side of the globe if they're in Australia or something. Or I've spoken to other people in Japan as well. Um, but anyhow, shut yeah. it down. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Goodbye. Well, thank you. Goodbye. This is it's the ending song. You know what it is. It's the song it's gonna oh. play. a human being gotta be like what's a way to just be competent these sweet instincts ruin my life